Northern March up top. He's going to be joined by Admiral Kidd as well, our commander of uh, Southern South Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, this is uh, Admiral Kurt Tidd, who is the commander of the U.S. Southern Command, which is one of two commands that uh, work in this hemisphere, the other one being the Northern uh, Command. And so I'm pleased that he can be here. Uh, I, I want to commend him uh, especially because he's been very involved in the last few days on uh, hurricane relief, especially in Haiti. Um, which is a very important matter, and obviously our hearts go out to people of Haiti uh, trying to deal with this situation. Of course, they're not the only country, including parts of my own, uh, that were affected by it. Uh, this uh, meeting is uh, a very, very important one for our hemisphere and our world, and I have had, as it turns out, just speaking personally, the privilege of observing for the last quarter century as it has grown with the region and the region's own uh, 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 development in the security field, all of us together, and even the export from this region by various countries to other parts of the world of security. Uh, and that's very heartening because our world's very much in need of security. But it was uh, at the, the, it, 24 years ago, I guess, and I was working in the Department of Defense at that time. This wasn't my responsibility, but I remember the great aspiration of the moment. And it, so it's very heartening to me to see it these years later. Um, we talked about a, a number of uh, subjects today, me and my colleagues uh, from around the hemisphere uh, today. There were two in particular I'll just mention to you of all the things that were discussed uh, that I mentioned in my own comments today, but a number of others did as well. Uh, the first is uh, the uh, hemisphere-wide cooperation in the field of humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. This is an area of obviously great important to, importance to our populations. It's a place where our military capabilities can make a big difference uh, to helping our people uh, when there is a disaster. And it's a place where countries working together um, is the only way to deal with uh, disasters which of course are not national phenomena, they are international phenomena. phenomena, And they, they know no borders, as was said by many today, uh, including the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago in his opening statement today. Another thing I, I mentioned today and that uh, happy to say more about is the defense in sorry, institutional reform. Uh, this also is very important. All of our defense ministries are constantly trying to change themselves, improve themselves, uh, connect with our populations, make sure we're serving our populations, um, make sure we're living in accordance with the principles for which we uh, were established and are given authority by our governments and our people. And so we're all constantly in that process and uh, we can learn from one another. So I expect to learn from my colleagues around the hemisphere and I think they may be able to learn from some of the experiences we've had. But that's that area, again, where uh, all of us have made great effort but also great progress in the last 24 years. Uh, I had some also some very productive bilateral uh, meetings, separate meetings, and I'll just mention a few of them uh, today. Of course, uh, first and foremost is our host, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm very pleased the Prime Minister was able to take a few minutes uh, to be with me, uh, and we discussed a number of very important issues, and I gave, was able to give him the opportunity to thank him for hosting this and also recall uh, uh, President Obama's uh, visit here in 2009, uh, which began a whole new era in our relations here. But the, uh, Trinidad and Tobago has done an absolutely superb job of hosting this, and I'm very grateful. I think everybody 
in the entire hemisphere is grateful for, to them for the, the big effort that it takes to do something like this. Um, but it's a, truly an act of statesmanship by a country in the region. Uh, I, I also had the opportunity, and this is it's worth noting, to speak yesterday by f telephone to the Defense Minister of Colombia, who could not be here uh, today uh, because he's working very hard to find a uh, path to a just and lasting peace in that country, something we, you know, we all support. Uh, but I did have a chance to talk to him today, and I talked to his vice minister, I mean, by phone yesterday, to t meet in person with his vice minister today. And in addition to, uh, to that issue, we really discussed the whole wide range of security contributions that Colombia makes, not just to security within its own borders, but in the region and indeed the entire world. And it's one of the most uh, well-regarded uh, 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 and effective militaries. Uh, I think uh, that's widely viewed that way. Certainly we in the United States view it that way, and they're a very good partner uh, for us. I could say the same also of uh, uh, my colleagues from Brazil and Mexico and Chile, whom I also had separate meetings with today. I'm grateful uh, to them, and we discussed a great number of issues, but in each case you have very capable institutions with which we partner and are grateful for that partnership. I'll just mention one specific thing. We um, did uh, sign with Chile a bilateral agreement, important agreement covering research, development, test and evaluation cooperation between Chile and the United States. That's historic uh, and allows us to do even more in a field that we're doing much uh, already. So uh, this is an important meeting. I'm grateful to have been a, 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 a part of it. I guess the last, the only thing I can say in closing is CDMA is here to stay. I think I learned that here. Thank you. And once again, we're uh, pleased to answer your questions. And where uh, Admiral Tid uh, can, can answer it also, I'll turn to him. Go, please go ahead. Peter, are you the? Sure. As a uh, ISIL faces the deep in Iraq and Syria and the splinter to different parts of the world, what steps can be taken to ensure that Iran is not going to well, I'll say something about that and then ask Admiral to, to, uh, to, to chime in. It was discussed today. Uh, it's an issue that all of our countries uh, are uh, aware of. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll say in a moment what we can do to cooperate uh, against it. But just to speak to the issue of ISIL in particular, uh, ISIL will be defeated, um, and uh, it, that will occur in Iraq and Syria, uh, and that will um, mean that uh, this evil movement cannot claim to have a physical home in Iraq and Syria. Uh, there are some cells of it around the world, Libya, um, Afghanistan, and so forth, and we work with partners uh, also to uh, stamp it out there. Uh, countries in this region, which include the United States, obviously are going to be on the watch for anybody who tries to come back who may have been radicalized. And of course, but of course, you don't have to have physically gone and come back anymore to be radicalized. In today's world, you can be radicalized on the internet. So I, I think I understand your question was about foreign fighters, uh, but uh, I think also lone wolves or self-inspired people are concerned to all of our countries. And so all of us play a role in that, along with our colleagues from other agencies and our in our governments, and you say, what can we do together? I think the principal thing we can do together is share information. Uh, and uh, I think certainly the United States is committed to doing that. We did discuss that among the, the, uh, the ministers so that each of us has all the awareness we can possibly have uh, of anyone who might try to return to any of our countries um, who's associated with uh, this group. 
And with that, let me see if Kurt wants to add anything to that. Kurt? Just to, uh, to chime in what the Secretary said, uh, all of the security uh, chiefs from uh, throughout the region recognize that this uh, phenomenon of self-radicalization is something that literally can strike in any country. So none of us is immune from it, and it can happen rapidly. And as has been pointed out, the, uh, the, the solution, the most effective solution, is effective information sharing between the, uh, the countries uh, as, uh, as, as deeply and as, as rapidly as we possibly can. Um, Secretary Carter, uh, Captain Davis today at the Pentagon hinted that um, the U.S. is potentially considering retaliatory strikes against whoever fired those missiles at the USS Mason, um, including that those shots were fired at their own peril. Is it a perfect point to strikes against the actor of um, whoever fired those missiles, whether uh, the partners or unilateral? We're, we're, we're first and foremost uh, trying to determine. Uh, who did this and what the intent was behind it. Uh, but he's absolutely right that not only um, uh, do uh, U.S. forces everywhere in the world have uh, the right and tremendous capability to defend themselves, and no one ought to underestimate uh, that. We also have the capability to take action against anybody uh, who has taken uh, action or aggressive action uh, against uh, our forces and uh, anybody who contemplates such action ought to understand uh, that that is a capability the United States has. That's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, we are in the process of, of uh, investigating that incident and we understand it, then we'll take the appropriate uh, steps. Um, Fain Richards. Mr. Secretary, Fain Richards from TV6 News. Just following up on my colleague's question about ISIS. In this region, we have concerns that uh, we have people in ISIS who are members of this or other Caribbean nations and who may return home. One of the suggestions has been to essentially make them stateless, which would leave them in limbo and essentially uh, being denied entry because we have, of course, a weaker monitoring system and lesser capability than the U.S. to be able to track them should they be allowed to return to Trinidad and Tobago. Is that a suggestion you think is practical for smaller countries to adopt to deal with that problem? I, I, that was not something that was discussed uh, today. I think we all have uh, legal systems and criminal justice systems uh, in our countries to uh, 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 mete out justice uh, to anybody who harms or attempts to harm people in our uh, uh, populations. Uh, if they're on the battlefield in Syria and Iraq, as I said, they're subject to the ongoing campaign uh, that the international coalition is is uh, is waging there. But if, if they're citizens of a state, they're citizens of a state. It's that state uh, it, it has the ultimate disposition of them as a law enforcement matter, and that. CTV. Well, I, I agree. I regret it. I think they made a mistake. We obviously were in favor of including Cuba. Uh, I think that's important. The United States uh, strongly suggested that uh, idea, and uh, Cuba missed an opportunity uh, by not being here today. So I second uh, what my hosts had to say. I'm sure we got to catch a plane. And just come thank you all so much for being here. And just once again to thank the government of Trinidad and Tobago for for uh, for doing this. It's a huge uh, uh, commitment uh, that we all make to security in our hem hemisphere and our world. This is a place where we all get together, people of goodwill, and try to think about how we can make a better world for our children, and you were the very gracious and wonderful hosts, and so the, to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the government, thank you. Thanks, everybody.